like this to just Father in heaven, we honor you and we praise you. We give you thanks and praise, you who is highly deserving, O oh God. Once again, mighty Father, you have caused us to see another day, to live another life, mighty God. And Lord Jesus, we have chosen, mighty God, in this day that you have made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we decided, mighty God, and we declare, mighty God, because you are Elohim, you are Adonai, and you are Shama. Father, we say that, Lord Jesus, may you bring about your breakthrough as we raise you as our banner in this sanctuary. As we lift your name, O oh God, I pray that, Father, may you bring about the victory. Lord Jesus, may you bring about the victory because indeed, mighty God, our faith, mighty God, is founded on you. And Lord Jesus, we will not be moved, but we will exalt you and only you alone. Because you're worthy of the praise and worthy of the glory. Mighty God, you remain the same from the rising of the sun until the time that it sets. And because of this reason, Lord Jesus, we choose to worship and praise your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for who you are. Thank you, Lord God, for dying for us, mighty God. You're worthy of the praise, worthy of all the glory. Thank you, O oh God. You indeed deserve the glory. You indeed deserve the praise. Oh, yes, you are worthy. Jesus, you are worthy, oh God. Oh, you are worthy. Oh, you are worthy, Jesus. Lord, you are worthy. Oh, from age to age, you remain the same. Oh, King of glory. Oh, God. Oh, God. We acknowledge your presence today, oh God. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Oh, Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. King of kings and Lord of lords. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Yes, oh, God, you are worthy. Oh, you are worthy. Oh, Lord, yes, oh, God. Oh, you are, you are, you are. Oh, the great I am.
we thank you, oh God. So oh God, the breath of life, oh God, the breath that renews, mighty God, even us who are weary, mighty God, your breath is more than sufficient, even us who are tired, oh God, your breath is sufficient, mighty God, even us who are discouraged, mighty Father, your breath is sufficient, mighty God, oh, because there is no one like you, oh God, hey. Oh, oh, mighty Father, I run out of words to say before your throne. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Matchless love and beauty and Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Lord, your presence is heaven to me. Your
stood in awe of God's presence, just join me and say these words with me. Powerful, powerful. 
Yeah.
Yes, Lord, this morning. From the bottom of our hearts, we want to confess and declare to the heavenly, you have done great just take a moment and let's marvel the great thing the Lord has done in our lives. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of people perish in this world due to this pandemic and various issues. But he has preserved our life. What a great God. Hallelujah. Oh. The strong people, powerful people, rich people, people with the big fame and big authority, they are perished, but the Lord remembered us. We have a reason to say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for your faithfulness, your care, your love, your mercy. Oh, we cannot keep, keep our mouth shut. When we look into the amazing care and love of our Jesus, church, let's say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, who am I, a son of man? Hallelujah. But because of the everlasting love of Jesus, as the house of prayer family of God, you enabled us to stand for. We are alive. We can breathe. We can speak. We can open up our mouth and say, Father, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. We love you, oh God, more than everything. Lord, this morning, we totally surrender our lives before you. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us safe. We commit the entire house of prayer congregation in your hand. Many one in our congregation whom we do not know who is not feeling well, we speak a total healing and recovery upon them, oh Jesus. We pray for the various needs of the house of prayer congregation, their physical, financial, relational, spiritual, social needs. Lord, we pray, God, you will meet according to your riches and glory. Anyone who is going through challenges up and down in this season, we pray, God, you are handling them in the name of Jesus. We pray for our nation, Zambia, our God. We pray for our president. We pray for the ministers. We pray for every citizen of this nation. Lord, we speak God's protection and provision. In this pandemic, you preserve us a nation. It is nothing, uh, only the hand of Jesus. We declare it, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, for the hand of Jesus and of God who has been protecting us, preserving us as a nation from this pandemic affection, O oh God. Lord, we permit the world at large. We pray for the nations in the world. Leaders of the nation, citizens of the nation, those who are going through tough time, even still people are losing their lives, oh God, due to this pandemic, COVID-19. We pray the season has come. You are putting an end to this, oh Jesus, and you are comforting, oh God. We pray for an economical revival, a reformation, oh God. God, in your plan in eternity, oh God, you are supernaturally reviving the economy of the world, oh Jesus. We pray for the nation where there is no freedom to worship even truth and spirit. In this season, we declare the fear of God, the love of God. Oh God will reach to every leader. We pray for the nation of Israel, peace and stability. Various nations that are represented in house of prayer. We pray God's blessing, oh God, this morning as we sit at your feet. We commit the rest of the service in your hand. Only one thing we ask, come and show up. Come and show up. Come and show up, O oh God. Bless, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Praise the Lord and good morning, church. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good all the time. Amen. And that is His. Can we give a round of applause to appreciate our God for what the Lord has done? 
It is good to see you all, all the smiling, glorious faces here and up there. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. Thank you for everything. If you are able to turn your neck left to right, friend back, just some wave somewhere and say, My brother, my sister, I am blessed to see you this morning in the house of God. Hallelujah. It's a great joy, you know. In the kingdom of God, may the Lord continue to bless you. May the continue, Lord, reward you. You will never lack anything. May God extend and expand everything. God has given you. Amen. 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 As the ashes, wait, please, ashes, wait for the time and all. All the ashes. Please, please, please. We can pass the public bags so we can say we need more ashes. And the ashes are moving with the offering bag. This morning we are blessed to have Prophet Joshua. It's not the Lord today, he's with his beloved wife, his family. We are being blessed from Thursday, Friday. Saturday, that is last night, remember God, we have been blessed. We have been blessed. So this morning, he has come to conclude what the Lord has given to him for also prayer for this season. So Pastor Joshua is not a new house of prayer. I don't think I need an introduction. He's been he's been here, he's the one who Is, is the one who came and concluded our last four days of our 21 days of prayer and fasting. Pastor, you are blessing to us. Soon we will be giving a membership card. Yeah. Amen. 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 We came to know Pastor Joshua through Pastor Peter. And thank you, Pastor Peter, for connecting such a wonderful servant of God to us. Hallelujah. Amen. And this morning, it's my great privilege to welcome the man of God, uh, Prophet George Kornaka, to come and minister the word of God. Let's put our hands together and the man of God. Amen. God is good. 
If you know you've been there where your back was against the wall and you thought there was no way out, you made it. Can you give us tea? Can you come? Worship him if you know that he made a way for you. Ah, oh, Jesus. He's the way man. He's the way man. He's the way man. Worship. Worship. And if you are at that point where you see no way, I want to tell you that we are worshiping the way maker in this place. He's making a way. Ah, because some of us are here to testify that he made a way. There was a time that I thought it was over. But he made a way.
God has sent me to come and tell someone here that there is a way out. There is a way out. There is a way out. Whatever situation you found yourself in, God is saying to you this morning that there is a way out. There is a way out. There is a way out for you. You will not back down. You will not drown. You will not tap out. You are not surrendering. There is a way out. If you don't get anything out of this place, today get this with you home. There is a way out. Even this shall pass. Even this shall pass. Heavenly Father, I thank you. And I bless your name because you are faithful and righteous and holy God. For you are not mine that you should repent. In you there is no shadow of Thank you. Because you are watching over our lives. Thank you. Because even this shall pass. Even this shall pass. Even this shall pass. If you know it is making a way with your hands together and celebrating the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. You may be seated. You may be seated. Ah, uh, okay. I'm going to run. I know that uh, we are in the new normal of one hour to or so service. But you know, we are Pentecostals. Sometimes it is as the spirit leads, but we try to be faithful. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter number 16. Genesis chapter number 16. So the best day that I ministered, which was the fourth day, we spoke about the uh, we spoke about maintaining the faith in the crisis. The second uh, uh, day. What do we talk about? We are following ah, the power of consistency. And uh, yesterday we spoke about how to reign over impossibilities. Today we are in Genesis. We are going to conclude in Genesis chapter number 16. And I believe that God is going to touch our lives. I believe that God is going to transform us. Praise the Lord. This is a prophetic word to someone. If you are taking notes, uh, do it so diligently. Because this word will work for you. If not today, but at some point, it will certainly work for you. Genesis 16, I'll read verse 1, the whole chapter. So I'll read quickly. The Bible says, it certainly work for you. Genesis 16, I'll read verse 1, the whole chapter. So I'll read quickly. The Bible says, Now Sarai, Abram's wife, at this point, she is still Sarai, and he is still Abram. Abraham, not Abraham. Abraham's wife, born him no children. She had a female Egyptian servant whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said to Abraham, Behold now, the Lord has, uh, has prevented me from bearing children. Go into my servant. It may be that I shall obtain a child by her. And Abraham listened to the voice of Sarai. So, uh, hey, I've seen another message there, but I'll not preach this one. So after Abram and 
uh, had lived 10 years in the land of Canaan, Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, the Egyptian, her servant, and gave her to Abram, her husband, as wife. Take note of that, as wife. And he went into Hagar, and she conceived, and when she saw that she had conceived, she looked with contempt on her mistress, and Sarai said to Abram, May the wrong done to me be on you. I gave my servant to you, to you, to your embrace. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked upon me with contempt. May the Lord judge between you and me. But Abraham said to Sarai, Behold, your servant is in your power. Do to her as you please. Then Sarai dealt harshly with her, and she fled from her. The angel of the Lord found her by the spring of water in the wilderness, the spring on the way to Shah. And he said, Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from my mistress. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit to her. The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will surely multiply your offspring so that they cannot be numbered for murder. The angel of the Lord said to her, Be your behold and shall bear a son. You shall call his name uh, Ishmael, which means God hears, because the Lord has listened to your affliction. He shall be a wild donkey of man, his hand against everyone and everyone's hand against him, and he shall dwell over against all his kinsmen. So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, you are God, you are God of seeing, or you are the God who sees me. Uh, for she said, truly here I have seen him who looks after me. Therefore, the well was called Belai, Roy. It lies between Kadesh and Beret. And Hagabo, Abraham, his son, and Abraham called the name of his son, whom Hagabo Ishmael. Abraham was 86 years old when Hagabo Ishmael to Abraham. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Now, there are certain characters in scripture that, uh, or certain passages in scripture that preachers usually try to avoid or run away from because uh, preaching must be, the message must be positive, it must be encouraging, it must be motivating, but there are certain characters in the Bible, it is very difficult to bring them out and present sort of a positive uh, 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 message. And I'm going to preach from one of such characters this morning, and I believe that the Lord will minister to you. I want to speak to you on a subject I have entitled... Uh, victims of circumstances. Victims of circumstances. We are reading a very interesting story. As I was looking at this, I've come to realize that actually the story of Sarai and Hagar is a very interesting story and very contentious, not just in, 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 in religious circles, but even in secular circles. Uh, feminists uh, use it and, and uh, the story is also very important in Islam, in the Baha'i faith. And so I realized that this story is very, very important. And Hagar is a very peculiar character uh, that I've come to realize that sometimes we don't pay much attention to. Uh, but then we'll draw something out of, out of this. Uh, one thing that I am seeing in Hagar's life is that Hagar is a victim of circumstances. She's a victim of circumstances. Um, Christians have their own theory about who Hagar is. 
Muslims have their own theory about who Hagar is and the Baha'i faith, they have uh, their own theory about who Hagar is, her origin, and how she became to be a slave. But in all these theories, one thing you realize is that Hagar becoming a slave points to one simple issue that she had no choice in all this, in her becoming a slave. People were making decisions on her behalf without her consent, without her, 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 her contribution or anything. But people were deciding on her behalf. Uh, one of the theories that I, I liked is the idea that Pharaoh defeated some, some powerful man who was an Egyptian probably. And so Hagar must have come from a royal uh, family sort of and became a slave in the house of Pharaoh. And the time Abraham went to visit Egypt because of a famine, and told Sarai to say that she is Abraham's sister. Uh, and Pharaoh took Sarai for a wife uh, temporarily. Uh, some people believe that it is at that point that Pharaoh gave Sarai Hagar to become her servant. And at that point she became Sarai's uh, a, a, a slave. But in all this, in whatever circumstances, you need to understand that slavery meant that people were making decisions on your behalf. Basically, that's what it was. Some people decided, uh, probably your parents borrowed money or they were defeated in war and some people took you or they gave you away as payment for their and Kongole, and, and so you became a slave, and you had no say over your life, but other people had decisions over your life. At the point, whatever was happening in Hagar's life, uh, she became basically a victim of circumstances. Being a victim of circumstances basically means things are happening to you, of which you cannot control, you have no control over. Uh, situations and circumstances are dictating where you are going to be, uh, who you are going to be with, and what is going to happen to you, what you will be involved in, and everything that will follow after that. And we see it typically in chapter 16 as Abraham and his wife. They have been following God for some time and uh, God promised Abraham a son. And uh, as time went by, Sarah is seeing and realizing that her womb is dying. And Abraham is growing old. The strength is running out. And so they get to a point. Sarah comes to Abraham and says, ah, Don't you think, because it was a common practice then, don't you think that you can have my slave for a wife so that she can bear us uh, a son? Probably the promise of God will be fulfilled uh, through Hagar, and in this conference meeting, in this council that Abraham and his wife, they are having, Sarah, I mean, Hagar is not present. She is not there. She doesn't even know what is being discussed about her life. But there are people that are discussing her faith. There are people that are discussing what is going to follow next. And so they agree and it is settled. And Hagar is not consulted. People have made choices and decisions on her behalf that she is going to conceive and bear a son for them and does not know. She's not even uh, uh, called to say, what do you think? Do you think is a good idea? Or uh, here is a contract we are going to sign and there shall be benefits for you. There is nothing like that. She's just told this is what is going to happen to you. 
And so uh, probably Hagar thought that her life now is going to improve because she'll be considered as a wife to Abraham. But when she gets uh, 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 pregnant, the Bible says that she began to treat Sarai, her master, with contempt. Uh, I would want to think that probably this was not really contempt as contempt, but probably Hagar began to behave like a wife other than a slave. I don't know if you are follow, if you're following me. And so probably Sarai felt intimidated that my slave has become an equal and she went to complain to the husband. They had another conference meeting about her and she wasn't present. And Abraham said, look woman, she is your slave. Do whatever you please with her. Whatever you want to do is up to you. They have reached another conclusion without her consent, without consulting her, without talking to her. She has no idea. And she just realizes that the following day, the treatment has changed, the Bible says. And Sarai began to miss treat her and she just realizes that the treatment has changed not knowing that there was a conference meeting last night where her fate was decided further you understand what i'm saying so 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 sarai is a victim of she is going through things that she did not choose things are happening to her that she had no idea they were going to happen but People sat and made agreements starting from, I don't know, whatever age, probably when she was a teenager, whatever happened to her parents. Some people made a decision for her to enter into slavery. And in slavery, uh, a husband and wife sat down and began to decide that she is going to be their surrogate mother. And she wasn't consulted. They just made the choice and the decision. And, and, and from there, when she thought that maybe I've arrived now, I've become a wife or something like that, things still took another turn and she was ill-treated until she had to run for her life. I've come to learn that many of us in life, as we go on this journey, we are victims of circumstances. Particularly 2020 has made all of us victims of circumstances. Circumstances. We don't know where the coronavirus came from and how it came about. There are many theories whether it is a natural occurrence or whatever it is. But at the end of the day, all of us, we have become victims of circumstances. One way or another, we are going through something that is affecting us. Imagine, even now, I can't even say, turn to your neighbor and give them a high five. I can't do that. We are all victims of circumstances we cannot shake hands we are used to shake hands we cannot hug some of us are huggers but it cannot happen why because we are all victims of circumstances businesses are dying not because we chose not because we decided or we made wrong mathematics but because somewhere somehow things are happening beyond our control our jobs are being lost some of us we are at the verge of losing our employment our income and everything some of us we don't know if we are going to continue with our education we don't know what's going to happen next just when we thought that things are getting better this week we just heard that numbers of the COVID-19 are rising in Zambia and fear grips us once more we are victims of circumstances but let me not dwell on the COVID-19 I want to, to know that one way or the other some or somewhere things have happened in your life that you did not choose, you did not decide. Everyone here somewhere at some point something happened that we had no control over. It just happened. It was beyond our reach. It was beyond our control. It was beyond anything 
anything that we can do about it. And sometimes we spend a lot of time beating ourselves and, and, and crying and, and, and blaming ourselves and thinking maybe I should not have done that. But I want you to understand that sometimes we are just victims of circumstances. Things happen. Things uh, just choose to happen. Women, wives are emotionally broken because the husband decided to make some agreement and arrangement and had the meetings and decisions were made with the side chick and you are emotionally a wreck simply because some people somewhere decided to make decisions that affected you. You are a victim of circumstances. Hagar went through a lot. And the Bible says she had to run for her life. Can you imagine a pregnant woman running into the wilderness, into nowhere for her life because the mistreatment was too much. She was simply a victim of circumstances. She reached a point where she realized why am I suffering like this? Isn't it enough that my parents chose to give up on me whichever way I ended up becoming a slave? Wasn't it enough that I become a, became a servant of strangers? Wasn't it enough that they made me a surrogate mother without my choice? Wasn't it enough that despite carrying their child, they still want to mistreat me, wasn't it enough? I've come to talk to people that are looking at their lives, they are looking at their businesses, their jobs, and everything else about them. It is suffering because of some decisions that someone somewhere made, and they had no choice, nothing to do with it. They, they, listen to me. I've come to tell you that you should not give up. Because you see, I know that sometimes you just feel like letting go of everything. Some of you, you are at a verge of handing in your resignation later because you feel like it is just too much. And you feel like you are so unlucky. You feel like there is something wrong about you. You feel like, because you see, when you are a victim of circumstances, it begins to play on your self esteem and your self worth. You think that you are worthless. You think that. Maybe you are not woman enough. That's why your husband has chosen to go for another lady. Maybe, maybe you are not hardworking enough. That's why your boss is always on your neck. Maybe you are not intelligent enough. That's why your business is dying. Maybe, but you need to understand that sometimes the circumstances are just on you, not because there is something wrong about you. You need to understand that sometimes people just treat you wrongly, not because you are wrong or you are bad, but especially when it comes to relationships, you need to understand that sometimes people treat you unfairly more because of their perception of you. Can I talk about perception a little bit? Because sometimes we, 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 we look at how people treat us, how people ignore us, how people pull us down, how people talk ill of us, and we begin to think that that's what we are worth. But it is not about that. Sometimes it is just people's perception of us. And you need to understand that perception differs from one person to another. Uh, can I talk about that a little while? Perception differs from one, one person to another. It, it, it depends on who is looking at what. Because you, 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 you see, I've, I've, always, I've, always, I've always thought about this. Indulge my, uh, my imagination. Sometimes I've thought that, you see, if we all saw the same things, some of us wouldn't be married. Mm. Come on. I think Pastor Mtende must have been seized something different. Because she's not the first woman I proposed. Some rejected me, but she accepted me. So I proposed to some. They saw me and they, don't, they didn't think this is a guy to settle for. And I spoke to her and said she thought uh, this is the guy. So her and the others were seeing different things. 
It is a question of perception. So some people see their perception. They see that you are worthless. So they treat you like you are worthless. It's not that you are worthless. It's what they see. Can, can, I, can I bring it a little bit? Uh, sorry, uh, just speaking as human. Even Paul at some point says, I'm saying this as a human being. So I'm saying this as a human being. Haven't you ever met uh, or seen a couple and in your human, perhaps sinful thinking and think, what did she see in him? Now you know what I'm talking about, right? I got, oh, maybe haven't you heard of the, maybe the group as you were playing as friends or in the neighborhood and you heard a sister was getting married and you thought, so even that one can get married. Huh? It's a question of perception. So those that treat you a certain way, they treat you that way because of their perception and you cannot change their perception it is how they think and what based on what they see and but that does not define who you are so Hagar and and so Sarai and Abraham I know that these are great giants of faith and I'm not painting any negative image on them. But as Sarai and Abraham looked at Hagar and thought of her as a tool, so they discussed and made decisions without consulting what she thought and what she felt and reached conclusion because of their perception of her. She is our slave. But Hagar was a human being with feelings. With feelings. But they treated her because of their perception. You need to understand. You need to grow in your life above people's perception. In order to overcome the negative impact that comes with being a victim of circumstances. Because when circumstances make you a victim... They begin to change your way of doing things. They begin to change your self-image and your self-worth. And you begin to think that probably you are worth less than you are. Because you begin to define and judge yourself based on what people see are on you and how people treat you. But it is a question of perception. I'm reminded of a story about a newlywed couple and they found an apartment and as, 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 as they leave the first morning, they woke up the wife, uh, the window to the, in, to the, in, in the kitchen was facing the neighbor's line where they put clothes and ev- so the first morning the young wife woke up, went to the window, she looked through the window and called the husband and said, honey come here and the husband went there and she said, uh, honey uh, the neighbor's I don't think they know how to wash. She said, what do you mean? Can't you see that their clothes are dirty, but she's putting them on the line. And the husband said, "Mm, that's weird. And he walked away. The second day, she did the same. The second week, she did the same thing. The third week, she woke up and looked and said, ah, honey, come and check. And said, what is it? And she said, our neighbor now finally knows how to wash. The clothes are clean. The husband looked at her and said, no. It is not the neighbor who doesn't know how to wash. It was our window which was dirty. So I cleaned it. Perception. Some people ask their perception of you is simply also affected by circumstances that they have gone through. Because of of life, they now cast that perception of you on you. But you listen to me now. Let me quickly because I think I'm running out of time already. Now, you need to go was a victim of circumstances and there is nothing she could do about the situation. But as she was running, the Bible says, she reached at 
a certain place. As she was trying to rest, she met an angel of the Lord and said, Hag, I have heard your cry and you shall give the son you are going to bear the name Ishmael, which means the Lord hears. But then something extraordinary happened. The Bible says after this conversation, Hagar named the God who spoke to her as the God who sees. He heard, but he saw. The God that we worship, he's not just a God who, who hears, he is also a God who sees. You need to understand between hearing and seeing. Many people hear, but they don't see. Many people that you expect and see. Many people hear, but they don't see. Many people that you explain your circumstances to and your ordeal and the things that you have gone through, they only hear, but they do not see. Listen to me. People just hear, but they do not see. They do not see what you are going through. They do not see what you have been through. They do not see where you are coming from. They do not see where you are going. They can only hear. That's why they talk about it. We talk a lot about what we hear, but those that see, they do something about the situation, and that is the God that we worship, the God of the Bible, the God that in, that Hagar encountered, a victim of circumstances, encountered the God who sees, and when she encountered the God who sees, the God who sees did not just hear, but when he saw, he did something about the situation. The Bible says he spoke and say go back to your mistress Hagar because, because I shall make you great I shall make you into a, into a nation and your son will be a donkey of a man he shall contend with everyone and he shall not be displaced when Hagar the victim of circumstances encountered the God who sees she became the grandmother it is believed of a great people known as Muslims because that's what it is believed that they are great grandchildren of Hagar they are descendants of Ishmael why? Because Hagar encountered the God who sees. Listen to me. We are all victims of circumstances at some point. Somehow, somewhere, we are going to go through, through things. And there is nothing we can do about it. But what you need is to have an encounter with the God who sees. With the God who sees. God who sees because when he sees, he does something about it when he sees. He changes the situation when he sees. He changes circumstances that made you a victim. He turns you into a victor when he sees. He makes you triumph over situations that suppressed you when he sees. He lifts you up, the Bible says. He makes you soar on wings like an eagle. The Bible says uh, he makes you the head and not the tail. The Bible says uh, when he sees, uh, he gives you power to acquire wealth. The Bible says when he sees, uh, he makes you more than a conqueror the bible says when he sees he makes you his righteousness the bible says when he sees he will never leave you nor forsake you the bible says when he sees no weapon formed against you shall prosper when he sees every tongue rising against you in judgment he shall condemn when he sees he turns a shepherd David into a king when he sees he turns a stammerer Moses into the greatest prophet that the world had ever seen when he sees he makes people 
people who were a nothing into a somebody when he sees he says let the blind say I can see and the poor say I am rich when he sees he says that I'll never leave you nor forsake you because you are the apple of my eye when he sees he changes the story he is the God who sees I've come to talk to victims of circumstances maybe not to everyone but those that are experiencing things in life that are beyond their control I've come to introduce to you the God who sees he does not just hear but he sees and when he sees the Bible says he appeared to Moses and he said I have heard the cry of the Israelite and I have seen go and tell Pharaoh that let my people go because the God who sees when he sees the Bible says Jesus when he saw the people he was filled with compassion the word compassion is made of two words come and passion which means to suffer with when he sees he does not just watch you suffer alone he suffers with you Hagar encountered who sees he encountered the God who sees what this means is that God turned a slave whom everyone was making decisions for into some making decisions for into some into a great nation into a great nation he turned can you imagine this is a slave who no one considered everyone wakes up and makes decisions and choices but when she encountered the god who sees he says i will make you into a great nation i've come to talk to victims of circumstances that once you encounter the god your story is going to change you become a victor and not a victim you become a victory the bible says we become more than conquerors the bible says because we can do all things through him who gives us strength ah listen to me some story is about to change things will no longer be the same because the God who sees has sent me to tell you that he has seen your situation he has seen where you are coming from and he sees where you are going and he sees where you are at he sees what's happening to your business he sees what's happening to your family he has seen what's happening to your marriage he has seen what is happening to your children he has seen what is happening to your education and he says i am the god who sees and when i see an issue i never leave it alone the god who sees the victim of circumstances encountered the god the victim of circumstances encountered the god who sees a slave girl who nobody counted or considered all her life she's never made a choice or a decision everybody has been deciding the fate of her life but in the twinkle of an eye the story changed Yes, this, your story is changing today. I say it in this meeting now. As you hear the sound of my voice, your story is changing now. There are things that are moving in the background. God is making people discuss, but no longer choices, no longer choices made for you. They are discussing how your life is going to improve. God is making people discuss how your story is going to change. God is making people discuss your breakthrough that has been pending for many years God is making people discuss how your life is going to get better in Jesus name 
victims of circumstances they encounter the God who sees therefore as I come to the conclusion it doesn't matter other people's perception let them treat me as they perceive me but there is another one who sees me there is another one who has a perception about me there is someone who created me the bible says i am fearfully and wonderfully made in his eyes and he has a plan for me a plan not to harm me but to bring me an expected end there is someone who sees me there is someone Someone who sees you. There is someone who is aware about you. There is someone who sees your situation and circumstances. And listen to me. It doesn't matter all those who sees you and the way they see you. Their perception about you. But it is only their perception. There is someone greater than them all. There is someone greater than your boss. There is someone greater than your husband. Husband. There is someone greater than your wife. There is someone greater than your mother. There is someone greater than your uncle who sees you. It doesn't matter what your husband thinks about you now. But there is someone greater than him. And he is seeing you. There is someone greater than all those that have been suppressing your success and your rising. There is someone greater. And if he is greater greater than those that are perceiving me in an evil way I will choose his perception over their perception I will choose their perception over your perception it doesn't matter what you think about me but he says he has better plans for me ah there is someone who sees me there is someone who sees me I've come to talk to people that have become bitter in their lives because someone has a wrong perception over you. They have labeled you and tagged you and brought all such kind of nonsense in your life. But listen, I want you to concentrate on him who sees you. There is a God who sees you. There is a God who sees you. I want you to go this with this in your mind. If you want, go and write it somewhere. Print a sticker and put it on your car. Put it somewhere in your house, on your fridge, on your mirror, on your dress mirror. Go and print it somewhere. Every time you wake up, look at yourself and read it aloud to yourself. There is someone greater who sees me. Who would have thought? Look, look at the irony of this. I need to conclude. Sorry, Pastor. I know I've kicked a little bit of time. But I need to co- listen, listen to me. There is something that I see extraordinary. This is... The, sorry, I know you are recording. Can I come down a little bit? Listen. This is something extraordinary. We are talking about Abraham, the man of faith. And we are talking about the God who speaks to Abraham. I want you to think about it. We are talking about the God who has chosen Abraham to be the father of faith. That's the God we are talking about. And this is a God who leaves Abraham and walks to a slave girl in the wilderness. Ah, come come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. I mean, I must have thought that this is a God of Abraham alone. (laughs) But he says, no, 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 no. I'm also the God of a slave girl that has been rejected. I'm also the God of a slave girl that no one has been paying attention to. I'm also the God of a slave girl that no one has been consulting. Hey, he is also your God. He is seeing you 
no matter the situation or the circumstance no matter where you come from no matter what they call you no matter what the circumstances of your birth your name your background or whatever they think about whether you have a family or not he is also your god and he sees you the god who sees visits victims of circumstances shall we rise to our feet may the lord visit you may the lord visit you right now in this service may the lord visit you as you drive home may the lord visit you in your living room as you sit today you relax may the lord visit you in your sleep may the lord visit you in your warfare tomorrow May the Lord visit you one way or the other. May the God who sees visit you in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and begin to thank him and say thank you Lord because you've been seeing me all this while. Thank you because you've been seeing me all this while. Thank you because you've been seeing me all this while. Thank you because been seeing me all this while. Masade de debosai. A libro conta la basekete, e kito barante ke libra antaba. Zakate lebele ke tele mandala bosa, libra da 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 bosa ke tele beria tala mama dele bosa, libra kanta la ba 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 sete. He has been seeing you. He has been seeing you. He has been seeing you. Thank him, thank him. Tell him thank you that you are aware of my situation. Tell him thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We receive it, we receive it, we receive it. you for the word for this season for house up we receive it thank you lord thank you holy spirit in jesus name amen and amen and amen take your seat we are done five minutes amen prophet of god thank you so much are we blessed the church are we blessed can we give a one more big round of applause hallelujah amen as the worship team comes the building committee ushers from the building committee please ushers from the building committee for the sake of the visitors we take to offering not by force we won't force any of you we don't look at you the second offering purely goes towards the construction of the sanctuary as the offering backs up as the lord has given you something towards the construction of the sanctuary you are free to drop if you don't have don't worry nobody is going to look you down nobody is going to talk anything it is purely god and you may the lord thank you so much church for your sacrificial support towards the construction of the sanctuary i heard some gossip from the building committee they are going to finish soon the toilets perfectly the new toilet new gents and ladies Thank you for the work within a shortly that will be perfectly done. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Once again, man of God, thank you. From Thursday, the word came with clarity, power and authority. Hallelujah. We have a God who sees us. Shall we all stand? As after the service, no hugging, no shaking. hands but if you have a special, you have been praying this seven days of prayer and fasting and you wanted to speak a word the man of god wanted to speak a word upon you that is your heart you are free to remain here the man of god will be here but don't spend one hour with the man of god uh one person one hour no if you have any need come the man of god is here the chairs are there you are free to sit and i don't want any of you go empty heart god has been putting in your heart i want to see the man of god i want him to speak a word into my life you are free this we are here he will definitely do thank you so much as you have dropped 
whatever the lord has given to you thank you lord please close your eyes please close your eyes thank you jesus thank you holy spirit past seven days we set apart our time before god from monday tuesday wednesday reverend colombo spoke to us the prophet of god has been speaking to us the lord has given us the word for house of prayer this season thank you lord let's hold on to the word lord i pray against any form of counter attack that accident sickness any form of affliction infirmities anything the devil wanted to bring into house of prayer territory of god after seven days of prayer and fasting we permanently paralyze it lord we pray people are insulated jesus thank you god for the word which has been spoken through the man of god lord i commit past the prophet joshua and his family and the ministry the church in kitwe lord use the might We also prophesy may the anointing increase upon his life. And every desire and every project they have, Lord, let it be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. Father, as the house of prayer congregation goes back to their respective homes, take us home safely. Thank you for speaking to us very specifically and personally. We receive our word. Lord we also thank you for the sacrificial giving of the people of God towards the construction of the sanctuary. We ask God God continue to bless your people. Thank you Lord for the building committee keeping them safe and well and everything you have given to them a bless oh God. This project you began and this project you will complete successfully for the glory of Jesus. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Thank you Holy Spirit. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever amen and amen may the lord bless you richly have a blessed week see you on wednesday 1815 man of god family thank you so much we are blessed to have you god bless you anyone wanted to have a prayer with the pastor you are welcome may the lord bless you
presence, Lord. All I want is to worship you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship you. In the midnight hour, I will bless the Lord. In the midnight hour, I will bless the Lord. In the midnight hour, I will bless the Lord. In the midnight hour, I will bless the Lord. In the midnight hour, I will bless the Lord. In the midnight hour, I will bless the L